The internet is a vast place. Nearly any question that comes to mind can be answered with a simple keystroke. Any curiosity can be quelled with a simple search term. And yet, when we hit enter and look upon the very answer we sought out to find, many of us experience a very peculiar kind of cognitive dissonance. The answer you sought out is grotesque and disturbing. And yet, you can't look away, and you don't know why. It's almost like coming to grips with our morbid reality is a task fit for no one. Summer, August 12th, 1985, Japan Airlines Flight 123 was a scheduled domestic Japanese passenger flight from Tokyo Haneda Airport to Osaka International Airport. The flight was at capacity, 524 people were riding that day, and the flight taken was typical and mundane. Nobody expected what was going to happen. The plane was a Boeing 747SR, and immediately after takeoff, it suffered sudden decompression and crashed in the area of Mount Takamagahara. Japan's Aircraft Accident Investigation Commission officially concluded that the rapid decompression was caused by a faulty repair by Boeing technicians after a trail strike incident during a landing at Osaka Airport in 1978. This is a picture of the aircraft taken around 6.47 p.m. It shows that the vertical stabilizer is missing. The Japanese Aircraft Accident Commission concluded that the rear bulkhead of the plane had been repaired with an improperly installed doubler plate. This compromised the plane's airworthiness. This picture was taken on the flight just before the crash. The assumption was that the plane was going to make an emergency landing and everybody on the flight would be safe. Who knew that the person taking this camera would not only capture their final moments, but the final moments of 500 other people. Photos like these are a dime a dozen. Everybody likes to take a selfie with their friends, but this one has a little bit of a backstory. Starting from the left, we have Issa Ricker, Kelsey Webster, both 15, and Kelsey's little sister, Savannah. This picture was taken in Utah in the scenic Spanish Fork Canyon in October of 2011. And unfortunately, the light behind them is a moving train. And tragically, all three young girls were struck and killed by the train. An article written by Union Pacific goes into detail about what happened and how the girls ended up on the track in the first place. We saw them for about 12 seconds until they disappeared from our sight and the train just continued moving forward. We watched in horror as we got closer, said John, recalling how he and Michael yelled as if it might stop what they knew was about to happen. We saw them for about 12 seconds until they disappeared from our sight, and then the train kept moving forward. John raced back when the train finally stopped about a quarter mile down the track. The first girl he saw had no pulse, and it was clear that the second girl was no longer alive. John heard the 13-year-old Savannah near the railroad crossing. She was hurt and agitated, but alive. I told her everything would be okay, and she relaxed a little, said John, who held Savannah's hand until the paramedics arrived. I hoped she would make it, and for some reason I really thought she would. The article then goes into detail about how the conductors processed this tragedy. Both John and Michael struggle with it, blaming themselves, bringing up how they could have done something to slow down the train, when in reality there was nothing they could have done to save the three girls. Savannah survived the hit, but would die three days later. The Union Pacific Rail Line went out of their way to create PSAs about rail safety, and Jaina Webster, the mother of Kelsey and Savannah, had this to say. No one should have to go through this, and I hope people will seriously think about the campaign's rail safety message and share it with their loved ones. Like the other post, pictures like this seem very common. I'm sure everyone has a photo of themselves as a child pictured with their family pet. This is six-year-old nephew Sulu hugging his two-year-old pit bull mix named Kava. His parents took this picture, and soon as the camera was put down, Kava the pit bull mauled Nephi. The police report concerning this event talks about how this may have happened. It sounded like they were engaged in some type of horseplay with the dog. The boy was actively playing with the dog and may have attempted to climb onto the dog's back. And after that, the dog bit the young child. It only took one bite because Nephi was so small. This is abnormal because mauling is defined as a series of bites, not just one. The family were very shocked at the dog's behavior. The dog was kind to everyone else and to the young boy, but in seconds things changed and the young boy was killed. When concluding the investigation, the leading officer had this to say, I'm beyond distraught. 
My understanding of the facts leads me to this conclusion. This unfortunate tragedy could have happened to anyone. The breed of the dog is irrelevant. The dog's been part of the family for several years and exhibited no signs of aggression whatsoever. This is Gladys Ricard, and this picture was taken on her wedding day. And this is Austin Garcia. He was Gladys' ex-boyfriend. Their previous relationship lasted for seven years. And in the beginning, Garcia was very loving. He purchased her a house and brought her to high-profile events to meet politicians and other wealthy people. But over time, he became violent and abusive towards Gladys. And what motivated her to break up with him was when she caught him cheating with her best friend at his office. Quickly after the breakup, Gladys met another man. His name was Preston, and after two months of dating, he proposed to her, and they planned to get married. Her wedding was scheduled to begin at 4 p.m. on September 26, 1999. And on her wedding invitation, Gladys wrote, This day I will marry the one who loves me without end, the one who brightens my life and gives love a new meaning, the one who shares my dreams. A little bit before the ceremony began, though, Austin Garcia showed up. The first person to notice his arrival was Gladys' brother, and then quickly after that, her friend noticed too. She had this to say, I thought it was weird for him to be here, but I thought maybe he was congratulating her? He wasn't a street thug, but an educated, respected man. After calmly walking through Gladys' house and greeting her brother, he would push through the crowd and made his way into the living room where Gladys Ricard was giving bouquets to her bridesmaids and getting ready to leave. He then pulled a 38 caliber revolver from his briefcase and shot at her five times. Gladys Ricard was shot three times, once in the head, spine, and upper arm. And the only reason why Austin stopped was because he ran out of bullets and Gladys' brother tackled him to the ground. In the photo, you can even see his gun pointed at Gladys Ricard as she attempted to run away to protect herself. Police arrived quickly and arrested Garcia. He was placed in jail and held on a $5 million bond. And when his trial date came up, he was sentenced to life in prison with a possibility of parole after 30 years. This is the vessel. It's a $200 million staircase located in New York. The staircase doesn't go anywhere, but if you were to scale it, it gives you really good views of the city. Unfortunately, many people haven't been able to experience that. The staircase has been deemed potentially dangerous because many people have been committing suicide there. Just recently, as of July 30th, 2021, a teen seen laughing with his sister suddenly jumped to his death from the vessel. There are websites that catalog all of the suicides that have occurred at the vessel. This is Andreas Escobar Saladariga. Born on March 13, 1967, he was a Colombian footballer who played as a defender. He's well known for being a defender on the Colombian national team. And the clip that you're about to see ended his life. Monien ennakkosuosikki Kolumbia sortui näpertelyyn ja putosi jatkosta. Kovimman hinnan Kolumbian putoamisesta maksoi puolustaja Andres Escobar, joka ottelussa Yhdysvaltoja vastaan teki oman maalin. Joukkuen palattua kotimaahan Escobar joutui kotikaupungissaan Medelliinissä sanaharkkaan kannattajien kanssa. Kiistely päättyi laukauksiin, Escobar murhattiin, hänen ruumistaan löytyi 12 luotia. After scoring on himself, Escobar decided to return to Colombia instead of visiting his relatives in Las Vegas. On the evening of July 1st, 1994, five days after the elimination of Colombia from the World Cup, Escobar called his friends and they went to a bar. And after they left, his friends split up. And while walking to his car, three men appeared. They began arguing with him. Two of the men took out handguns, and Escobar was shot six times with a 38 caliber pistol. It was reported that the killer shouted goal every time he shot once for each time the South American football commentator said it during the broadcast. The group then drove away in a Toyota pickup truck, leaving Escobar to bleed to death. Escobar was taken to the hospital where he died 45 minutes later. His funeral was attended by more than 120,000 people. Every year people honor Escobar by bringing photographs of him to matches, and in July of 2002 the city of Mendelin unveiled a statue in honor of his memory.
Lagoon Amusement Park, located in Salt Lake City, Utah, was established in 1886. It has a total of 55 attractions, and one of their most notable rides is the Wicked, a $10 million roller coaster that can travel at a top speed of 55 miles per hour. And this is a picture of a man who stumbled off of the sky ride at Lagoon Amusement Park. He's holding on to dear life, but it just wasn't enough. He fell an estimated 50 feet and died instantly. He was 32 years old, and when he collided with the concrete, people were calling 911. There are multiple cell phone videos and pictures recorded by other park goers who posted this event on social media. What was eerie about all of the videos and footage of this event was the fact that the man was quiet. He was completely silent while not making a single attempt to save his life. The bar was shallow enough for him to pull himself over, but he just chose to hang. Eventually, his grip gave out, he slipped, and fell 50 feet to his death. To most people, this looks like an ordinary sardine can, and in a lot of ways it is. But when OP opened the sardine can, a distress message was inside, with the words, We are Sunnis laborers enslaved by a company slash factory. The factory is Libyan and is exporting all of these products to Egypt. And one commenter on this post made the really good observation that this can is over two years old. Imagine how terrified and demoralized this person is. They're waiting for a response to a message they sent out two years ago. But I'm glad to say that somebody heard it, and hopefully this person has the means or the connections to make a change. But that begs the question, do you think the depravity that led to something like this happening will ever go away? Do you think that there will ever be a solution to human trafficking? In a lot of ways, I'm optimistic about that. I think that there's going to be a change. But I want to know what you guys think. This video is sponsored by Alphaprint. If you need help keeping track of things throughout your day and are tired of apps that don't help, Alphaprint has taken a traditional approach to dealing with everyday needs with timeless physical solutions. Like seriously, everybody can benefit from using a planner to help with day-to-day -day tasks or just as a means of organizing your day. Alphaprint is a small business and you can check them out at their website, alphaprint.tech, and their YouTube channel where the owner goes over how to use each product. They also have a merch store, so if you become a fan of their products, you can rock these sweet hoodies. Help me make the content you love by showing Alphaprint your support. Again, Alphaprint is bringing great solutions to everyday problems with awesome products. Thanks again to Alphaprint for supporting this channel. Hello everyone, it's your boy Aileris, and I hope you enjoyed today's video. And if you did, let me know in the comments down below, and leave a like if you liked the video. And if you're new to my channel, go ahead and subscribe fam. What you doing watching videos and not subscribing? And if you're old, make sure you hit that bell so you get these notifications every time. This video concludes our Aileris marathon of this week. I put out a ton of content just for you guys, because you deserve it. And I really hope you guys enjoyed everything that you saw this week. And as always, you gotta thank the Patreon supporters that make content like this possible. Unknown Void, I Didn't Bot My Views True, Julian Pullman, Sussy Bussy Bimbo Balls, Tanky Winky, Nobby Wobby, Upanut, Sinan, Harrison, Mr. Muffles, Ethan, Cameron, D4C, My Name to Nee, Xavier the Meme Dealer, Kiri the Sloth, Jackson Yoz, Lady Laughs a Lot, Mina the Swift, Esau, Izuku, Destroyer, Trey, Muffy Lou Who, Noah, Vermont, John Robinson, Eva, Catherine Taylor, Hannah, Will Billy, and Dustin. Thank you so much for your support. It is greatly appreciated. And if you want to help support the channel, there's two links in the description, one of my merch store and one of my Patreon. Both funds go directly into the channel so we can maintain what's happening here. And as always, stay zesty.